This video marks the beginning of the end. We will explore another universe and compete against the best fighters in a good old tournament. Traverse into a dystopian future of an alternative timeline to beat one of Dragon Ball's strongest and most popular villains. To do so, we will unlock new powers and enhance them with an old technique, as well as building something new and acquiring something special. So stay tuned and let's start right into it. I started off by trying the combination of Super Saiyan Blue with the Kaioken to see how much health it would drain per tick and let me tell you, it did a lot of damage. So I decided to enter the hyperbolic chamber and max up my mind and boost my constitution. I ended up with 2500 con and a battle power of 106,000. I then downloaded the shoulder surfing mod and removed the crosshair in the texture pack. I tried both in the first fights of the Universe 6 saga and quickly realized that the shoulder surfing doesn't go well without crosshair even with the lock on function of the train block mod. So I stopped using it after the fight against Frost. As you can imagine, fighting the guys from Universe 6 was not difficult at all because of the 50k health pool and key defense activated. Nope, not even hit stood a chance. It was so easy, in fact, I started the copy Vegeta saga there and then, with Monaka Beerus being the first enemy, and he wasn't really strong, but he made a huge hole in the ground of the plane biomes. After that I made sure to beat copy Vegeta in his base and Super Saiyan Blue form. before returning home. And the copy Vegeta saga even inspired me for something. My plan now was to build a gravity device which Vegeta uses for his training. But I had to get free kitchen shots and free take tier 3 first. Luckily for me, I had everything I needed for the take tier 3 left and boy was that expensive. Afterwards I grabbed my space pod and traveled to Nemec. There I blew up the ground with multiple spirit bombs to see if kitchen shots are horse on other planets. I didn't find any on Namek, but I still could go to Plan Vegeta. Said and done. There I proceeded with the same strategy, but this time I had to deal with the locals every time I threw a spirit bomb in the ground. Unfortunately I had no luck there as well and so I returned to Namek because if I had to collect the Dragon Balls yet again I'd rather be done in one go. After summoning Purunga once again I was in the possession of everything I needed and finally able to craft the gravity device. I didn't want to randomly place it somewhere and came up with a close idea. I had to go mining again, which I haven't done actively since the first video. I collected some iron and smelted it back at home. I tested my own idea on a creative word, but went with Dony Mine's tutorial of the Capsule Corp ship at last. The link to the tutorial is in the description. I used quartz because it was quicker to get than the basic wall stone, smooth stone for the grey parts and black wool as well as black stained glass for the dark parts of the ship and made the floor out of smooth stone slabs. After that I placed the gravity device and built this pillar where the buttons and stuff of the ship are located at. This is the final product. I tested the gravity device and I think it is way stronger than the hyperbolic chamber but it's not so easy to farm 
so I may have to figure something out for this in the future. For this video I wanted to fight someone out of order again and the observant eye has already seen it. For this I had to travel to the closest naval fortress. This time I want to fight the wither so I killed some wither skeletons with the looting 3 Z sword and collected the needed 3 heads. I traveled back home and wanted to have a fair fight so I dropped my potential completely. But I got annoyed at him flying around all the time and just struck him down. It didn't feel right though, so I collected 3 heads again and summoned him again. This time I had a bow with me and what should I say? I think zombies are harder in vanilla minecraft. As we're closing in to this project's end, I finally took my time to decorate my house with a little dining table. Come on, at least it doesn't seem empty anymore. Now I wanted to use the found iron to make a full power beacon. And I believe this is the first time ever I built one in survival. And I totally underestimated how much ore you need for this. While working on the beacon, I had my train radar with me because I wanted to place one as decoration in my house. But instead of one, they spawned six at once. I finished the beacon and in between finishing the beacon, I had started the future trunk saga. First up was the 10th Universe's Supreme Kai's apprentice called Sumasu, also known as Goku Black. He was no problem at all, so I continued and fought Sumasu of our timeline, who was still in his body, causing him to be a total breeze. I followed Goku Black to the future and defeated him a second time before he reached his new form, the Super Saiyan Rose, the divine slash evil equivalent to Super Saiyan Blue. Even with this power up, he had no chance, but I wanted to make sure I wouldn't be beaten by what was coming. So I went to the hyperbolic chamber and collected a total of 44 million TP, allowing me to max my constitution and raise my spirit to 3650. If I wasn't ready before, I definitely was now. The next fight was me against Sumasu and Black together. From this point on, I used Super Saiyan Blue together with the Kaioken and was able to hold the Times 2 version for some good amount of time. So the max con already paid out. After that boss, the two fused together, saying that they given Justice a form. So I showed them what Goku could do to the Justice League. Oh, Comic War intensified. And before I knew it, the fusion started to get corrupted. After surviving that state, I decided to boost the Kaioken even more, going up to times 5 now costing a good chunk of health even with it maxed out, but I was able to banish Sumasu once and fall. I kind of forgot, but it paid me a visit afterwards, but it wasn't really worth mentioning. That was it with this video. I hope you enjoyed it as well as the other videos of the Train Block C mod. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to never miss when I upload a new video every second Saturday at 12 p.m. CET. I wanted to give you guys a huge thank you for the support on my videos lately. This really motivates me to do more and I'm really happy to interact with you guys. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next and maybe last video of this journey, Dear Tarnished.